Well, good day and welcome to you. It is January the 21st. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing, and as always, I want to welcome everyone to Search for Signs. Whether you've heard this information before for years or you're hearing about it for the first time, I'm really happy that you're here. Now, what do we talk about on this channel? Well, we talk about the emergence of Maitreya and the Masters of Wisdom. We talk about why are the Masters coming back now? Why is it important that they're doing this at this particular time? And of course, what does it mean for you and everyone else that are doing this? If you are new, or even if you've heard this information before, okay, I do think it's best to educate yourself about this information. Know more about it. Kick the tires of it, perhaps, and see if there's any truth to it. And then you can make an honest decision on how to proceed. And I do think the only way to do that is to start looking at this information and reading about it and investigating it for yourself. I provided some links to help. Take me up on it and look at those links or not. It's up to you. But I do think the best thing to do is to really investigate it. Now, if you start diving into this information, especially on YouTube, and you, and you key in Maitreya, more than likely, you're going to come across videos of people who don't agree at all with what I say who Maitreya is. They think he's the exact opposite of what I say is. The reason why I put these videos up to begin with is because when I was searching for Maitreya years ago, that was what I came up with. I mean, I already, I'd already had experiences with Maitreya for years, knew who Maitreya was, met him, experienced his wisdom and his love, knew that what these people were talking about was not true, but yet these people... We're getting a lot of um, responses and views to these channels. So I put this channel up in response to them and say, well, I have a different view of who Maitreya is. Agree with me or not, but that's what I think. So that's why I did this. So hopefully you'll look at both sides of it for yourself, and then you can see if there's any truth to it. All right, now, I do have a couple questions to cover coming from the same person, Chiron667. And I thought I could answer this person's question by just typing it out as a reply. Because the first question they asked I thought was rather simple. Have you ever met or spoken to anyone who claimed to be the Maitreya? And I responded with yes. <laughs> now, then they asked, but you haven't found the right one yet. And I have found new signs of the coming of the Messiah in unexpected place. Interested. Now, what I was, to kind of give you, um, not to read what I wrote to this person, you can if you want, you can go check out the reply in the last video. But what I was saying by yes was, I've met Maitreya, you know, in my own life, but he never claimed to be Maitreya. But I have met people who claim to be Maitreya. It doesn't happen all the time, but there are people who, who do that from time to time. I've talked about this information for almost 30 years, pretty close, whether it's on TV, um, radio, uh, giving lectures, talking at expos, and now on YouTube. I have people that come up from time to time, oh, I'm Maitreya, or I'm Jesus. I was giving a lecture back in the 90s, and a guy stood up at the halfway through what I was when I was talking about Maitreya and said, I am Jesus, come back. So it is what it is. But most people who um, approach me and claim something, they don't claim to be Maitreya, they claim to be an ascended master. And that happens more than the other claiming to be Jesus or claiming to be Maitreya. So in either case, they're wrong. <laughs> so, and they're wrong because of they're, they're not seeing life as it really is. They're not seeing themselves as they really are. Um, and and I'm, that's the reason why I wanted to talk about it based on your the next question that you asked. Was it one question or two? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But um, And your statement that you had, because we can learn more about this information this way. But the times that I saw Maitreya, he did not claim to be Maitreya. It was just like he's on TV now. He approached me as an ordinary person. but And it took me to recognize him. Now, in every case that I saw him, uh, I did not ask if he was Maitreya. There were times that I knew it right away. I was talking to him like he was Maitreya. There were times that I didn't recognize him until afterwards. Uh, there was times that I, I saw him before I knew anything about this, and I didn't think to even ask. But in every case, I never asked him. And Maitreya always says that those who follow, you know, not to follow anyone, and those who chase after him have already lost him. So the time, if I had 
perhaps after me meeting him and talking with him, I had run around the corner to see if he was still there or ask him if he was my Treya. I'd have already lost him at that point, according to what my Treya says. So that's why I let him say what he says to me. You know, if I recognize him as my Treya at the time, he doesn't look like my Treya. He's in a familiar or a guise, and we'll talk about what that is in a second. Um, and I knew he was my Treya. Once he was done with whatever he had needed to say, and he went in one direction and I went the other, I didn't even turn my head around to look to see if he was still there. So that's why I don't go diving into television channels trying to find him on TV. I'll see him when I see him, you know. All right, now, um, then you uh, said, where is it? Um, I'll be honest, last year I thought for a moment that I would be the Maitreya, but that's over now. Now, let me say this too. Maitreya is his name. It's not a title. So it's not correct to say the Maitreya, just to be specific. Maitreya means the happy one. And the times that I've met him, he's definitely fit his name. <laughs> he's very happy. He can be very, very happy. Uh, he said, now I'm just a truth seeker. Why I thought I was the guy is because in GTA 5 game, whatever that means, I'm not familiar with that. There are multiple signs about it coming. It is even said that he is from Belgium. So I'm assuming you're from Belgium, Chiron 667. Now you say that you have met the Maitreya many times. That makes me curious. Have you made any videos about him? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're listening to a video about him now. I have over 400 videos where I talk about Maitreya. I even have a whole playlist of my Maitreya experiences where you can listen to me talk about what happened, you know? Now, do I have a video of him, like a real video of him that I took with my phone when I met him? No, of course not. The times that I even saw my tray, I would never even think to do that. There are people who, if you go to the Share International site, you can actually see images of him as a familiar. Somebody took a photo of him. Um, there was a woman who took a photo of him when he was an Indian man. He looked like a Christmas tree. He was very colorful, had a sign that said free hugs. <laughs> so, there's other times where he looks like a gypsy playing music or something like this, or a, a African American playing a flute in the library. These were all images of Maitreya. There's even an image of Maitreya as a woman, you know, but it was Maitreya. Now, what it is, and this is the reason why I wanted to talk about this, uh, for a couple things. One, about you thinking that you were Maitreya, but also about my own personal experiences here. The times that I saw Maitreya, it was a familiar. He was still in London. And any one of these masters can do it, and some of them have done it, and it's been recorded in Share International by people. But they can appear however they want to appear for that person. But it's not how they look for real. They, it's like a thought form. They created a person in order to communicate with me, but it's him. It's his energy. The person it's that, that, that the familiar doesn't have a life, wasn't born, doesn't have parents, doesn't have... Um, anything like that, you know, a place to go. It's just they materialize this image of this person for me and talk to me that way. And it's they do it so that I am always left with a little bit of doubt, like, was that really Maitreya or not? If it looked like him in Nairobi, or which was a familiar of him too, where the people recognized him as Jesus, that's the picture of him. Uh, if you look at the background photo of him with the headdress, that's not how Maitreya looks. That's how he appeared in Nairobi, Kenya. They saw it as Jesus. That's where they, these were fundamentalist Christians who saw him. Now, the times that I saw him, I saw him as a young boy. That was the first time I ever, I think I ever saw him. Um, to, I've seen him as an African-American male, a, a older, elderly white male that looked kind of like George Burns from Oh God, because he even had the members only jacket and the fisherman's cap and the khaki pants and had the same kind of rough build as, as a grandpa, you know. Other time I saw him as a Middle Eastern man, broad shoulders, very tall, thin, looked very much like the Buddha statue. And I'm thinking to myself that that might be how he really looked, but I don't know. And then other times I saw him as an African-American woman, you know, uh, those kind of things. So it's, you know, it, it just depends. But the first time I saw him uh, when I was in the third grade, I was sitting with class with my, with my classmates, and of course, I didn't know anything about this information. I was actually uh, very much into the church at the time, 
So I didn't know anything about this, didn't believe anything, didn't know anything, had never read anything about Maitreya. But I was sitting with my classmates in the third grade, and I can't remember if we had finished eating or we were eating or we were about to eat. I can't remember that detail, but I just remember sitting at the table with my friends. And coming out of the area where you would drop off your tray, you know, with your plates or your food and so forth, was the special needs class. And it was a small group of kids that were probably like five or six of them, maybe. And they had they had been there for years. And I knew the same group. I was familiar with who they were. You know, and... But yet this one day, there was a kid who did not appear to have any kind of need like that. Didn't look autistic. Wasn't in a wheelchair, you know... Look like a, you know, like a regular kid. Now, I'm trying to single out special need kids. So let me be careful about that. But he did not appear to need to be a part of that group. Okay, so he he looked blonde. He looked like a regular kid. Like I said, he was kind of bouncing in his step. Had this huge, boisterous uh, personality, a lot like Maitreya, very happy. But anyway, I'm sitting with my fan, with my friends and my classmates, and we're at the at the cafeteria table and here these kids are coming out and a lot of them were actually young adults at this time even though they were still in elementary school they went past me and then this blonde kid who ended up being my treya gunned right for me and started swinging me back and forth giving me this huge hug saying my brother my brother it is so good to see you again i missed you so much i love you so much and i didn't know who he was <laughs> at the time right and i pushed him away talk about free hugs. But anyway, I pushed him away and I said, get away from me, you octopus. And, but the one thing I remember about it, as uh, he was walking away, more like a skipping away, he turned to me and looked at me. And I was, of course, very embarrassed. All my, my classmates were like, ah, you know, that's your brother. Ah, you know, they're all laughing at me. And I, did, I, was, I just wanted to sink in my seat. But he looked at me and he gave me this huge smile. It was an accepting smile. He wasn't upset that I, I had rejected him. He looked at me, and I, the thought that I had even at that time was, you'll get it one day, Gary, don't worry. And he left. And then the next day, I felt really, really bad about it. And I, I was going to actually, if I saw him, I was going to say, I'm sorry, I pushed you away. Would you like to be my friend is what I was going to say to him. I felt really guilty about it, but I never saw him again. I saw the other kids, but I never saw him and, but yet, that was Maitreya. But he never claimed to be Maitreya. The times that I saw him, even when I was an adult, even when I knew he was Maitreya, never once did he ever come to me and say he was Maitreya. The closest that he ever came to indicating that he was Maitreya was when I saw him on the street in Marietta. And he said, you'll see me on, real, you'll see me on TV real soon. And we're going to change the world together. That was the closest he ever came to really intimating that he was who he was. There were other times that he said things to me that I I was like, that is my trick. <laughs> I just knew he was my trick. Because he said things about me that I that nobody would have possibly known uh unless he was my Treya. And then the last time I saw my Treya that I that I know of was last April. And he said something to me and it wouldn't make much sense. I'd have to kind of do a whole video on it. But I know that was my trail, but he never once claimed to be who I knew him to be because I recognized him immediately when I saw him because he called my name out and I had never seen the guy before. He's like, Gary, Gary, he's like screaming my name. <laughs> so that was that was one of it. I was like, how does this guy know my name? And then when he came up and started talking to me about something that I had just spoken to my family and my friends about a few days ago, that was very personal to me. And he's joking about it with me. And giving me a teaching at the same time, I was like, that was my trail. But yet, I didn't go running out after him or anything like that. So, hopefully that helps. Now, um, about you being my, you know, thinking you're my trail. Okay, that's what I was wanted to talk about too. Is, that's not common, common, but it does happen. You're not unique in, in thinking this. In fact, uh, Benjamin Krem was one of five disciples years and years and years ago, to be asked personally by, by Maitreya to make his presence known. He was in London. There was a disciple in New York uh, who was asked. He didn't believe it. 
uh, the one in Geneva didn't believe it either. Uh, Benjamin Krem said the disciple in Darjeeling is still asleep, whatever that means. And then there's a woman in Tokyo, I don't know if she's still alive or not, uh, was asked by Maitreya to make known his presence. She actually thought she was Maitreya. So it happens. And I, I wanted to say this and type it out, but it just didn't make much sense the way I was typing it out. Hopefully it'll make more sense by me saying it, is people such as yourself and others, pretty much everybody, I think, are sensing that Maitreya is here. The teacher's already back. They don't maybe know how to verbalize it to themselves even, but they know he's back. Millions of people have already seen him on TV and not recognized him. They've already been in his presence of who Maitreya is, but not known it was him. Now, the, even the people who are fundamental in, the, in dogma of Christianity who th- see him as the Antichrist are actually sensing that the Christ is back. And that's why they're looking so hard for the Antichrist. Good luck trying to tell them that. But, you know, that's the truth of the matter. That's what, this master, that's what Benjamin Krem's master said about it. It, all this interest in the Antichrist, all this interest in the end times even, is because people have actually inwardly sensed that the Christ is already back. And they just don't know how to verbalize it to the, even themselves because of their own conditioning. It's creating confusion for them. They're thinking that the Antichrist is coming. The Antichrist has already come and gone, actually. They're wasting their time in that regard. But the, um, that's why they're, they're sensing it that way. People who believe themselves to be Maitreya or the Christ come back are sensing it that way too. And then you got the vast majority of humanity who perhaps are starting to sense that something's afoot, whether they are aware of it or not, but yet don't know how to verbalize it either. Some of it's manifested in fear because they're uncertain of the future. Other ones perhaps are a little bit more hopeful of the future in the face of the fact of this all this uncertainty. So it just depends on, on who you talk to. But... We don't understand fully the connection of of thought and the connection of all our souls on this planet even, the oneness of this planet. But when we become, when a, a avatar of Maitreya's stature enters our lives in the way that they did, just comes into a major city, it has a dramatic effect on society and the consciousness of thought, actually. We don't necessarily see it that way. One, one way that it does manifest is, temporarily, is divisions. We, we start to divide our, our ways of thinking from left politics and right politics, you know, rich and the poor. The, all these divisions that we're seeing in the world that we think the world is getting ripped apart is actually because Maitreya entered the world. You know, he was never left the world in the sense that he, he went to another planet or another realm of existence. He was always here, but by him even just... Going into London on July 19th, 1977, it's had an unbelievable effect on the consciousness of humanity and will continue to be. Now, eventually those divisions that we are seeing that perhaps we're afraid of, meaning that it's the end of the world and so forth, are actually going to bring humanity together in a way that we can't even possibly imagine at this moment in time. And... The other part of that is the millions of people who are, who are seeing Maitre- Maitreya on TV, you could be one of them, Others people, other people could be, you know, who have heard this information before, are not recognize him. Eventually, he is going to say something that is going to let everybody know that knows about this information that that's who he is. He's not going to say who he is, but he's going to talk or start to speak in a way with a greater sense of urgency about the pressing problems of the environment, perhaps, or, or hunger, that it's going to make it easier for those people who know this information to go, that is Maitreya. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, something tells me that's him. Now, it's also important, a little side note, not to tell other people that you think that's Maitreya. It's better just to let them come up to that conclusion for themselves. But, you know, once humanity's responded enough more and more people will start to recognize him and will start to talk about this incredible person on TV is what he's saying. We, I've never heard that before. You know, and the people who think he's the Antichrist, I'll just leave us with this. Every single one of those people, I've even asked them, and they've either never answered the, the questions that I asked or they've said no. None of them have ever met him in person, seen him or recognized him on TV, 
experienced his love or wisdom, or even, even taking the time to really investigate about his priorities. They just automatically shut it down and say, oh, he's the Antichrist because he doesn't look the way that I think he should look. He just prefers to be referred to as the teacher. He doesn't even want to be called the Christ. So probably in the future, you know, especially in the very immediate future, are you the Christ? If he went asked, are you the Christ? Really? He's probably going to say, why are you calling me the Christ? If I'm the Christ for the Christians, what about the Messiah for the Jews or the Imamati for the Muslims? You know, he just prefers to be referred to as the teacher. But that's, I think, more... I think probably you are sensing the fact that Maitreya is already here and inwardly it got all twisted up and confused in your mind and you thought you were Maitreya. That's what I think. I could be wrong, but that's probably more of what it is. Thankfully for yourself, <clears throat> you had the objectivity and the honesty of mind to look and go, nah, that's not me. You know, I don't even want that job. <laughs> I mean, his job, are you kidding me? Whew, that's a hard gig that he's got. I mean, all if you, if you go back and if you go to the Share International site and you click on um, uh, articles from the master and you you read my favorite article that Benjamin Crumb's master wrote entitled "The Son of Man," talking about really who and what Maitreya is and who and what he means for humanity, his relationship with humanity, and his priorities. If you really look at it, I mean, it's it's a it's incredible what what we're in for in terms of the changes that will happen in the hearts and minds of all of us. But it's more incredible to think of how could anybody take on that job? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, with all the ignorance and the fear and the conditioning and the complacency of humanity, how could anyone effectively change that? You know, but it would take the level of somebody of the love of Maitreya to awaken the truth in the hearts of all of us in order to get us moving in the right direction, really. So that's why I wanted to respond to it in a video and not just key it out. So hopefully that answered it a little bit. So anyway, you take care. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening, and we look forward to talking to you again in future videos.